This is section 7.3. It is the section that speaks volumes. We have the type 1 type of volume that we're going to try to find. It's volume using known cross sections. In this example, the region R, bounded by the relate x squared plus y squared equals 4, which is a circle of radius 2. We have it graphed here, and these are all going to be values of 2 or negative 2 is the base of a solid. So in other words, we have uh, like the bottom of a can. For this solid, each cross section perpendicular to the x-axis is a square. So it's the bottom of what would be a can, but then uh, the solid is formed by squares. Find the, volume, <laughs> find the volume of this solid. Let's visualize this. And we have a nice geometer sketchpad program uh, to do that. Let's drop the x-y axis so we see a three-dimensional uh, surface. Then if we were to make the four squares where the bases are perpendicular to the x-axis, we'd have one, here's the second one, third, and then the fourth square. But let's say we had an infinite amount of those, and we could represent them, all, all of them, by sweeping this square uh, across the bottom of the circle. Now, the length of the square is going to follow uh, the, the, the path of the circle. Now, here we create the solid uh, as we sweep the squares across the circle. And you can see we would have the roof of this building, and there would be a corner here that would follow the curve, and we'd have another corner over here as the squares get bigger and bigger and bigger until they finally are at their biggest right across the diameter of the circle and then the squares would slowly get smaller as we reach the other side of the circle. And let's just show the solid now. Here's the solid and we have the ability to rotate that at any time to take a look at what this solid would look at different angles. And then we can slide the square through the solid to see how the solid is actually formed. So this is what we're trying to find the volume of. Let's reset everything. Let's drop the y-axis. Let's create the solid. Actually, I want to show the solid. And uh, maybe have a few squares in here. Let's see the four squares. Uh, show the solid. Ah, plus the four squares. That's what I was looking for right there. That's probably a little bit too much. Why don't we reset, drop the y-axis, and let's just see the squares. That's probably the best view we have and we're gonna capture that and put it on our screen and let's see if we can use it. Now in order to find the volume of this shape we are gonna take the integral from negative 2 to 2 and that's from negative 2 on the x to 2 on the x and we need the cross-sectional area but we're gonna do it in x instead of in r and we need dx. The bottom of the rectangles, or, or a representation of one of the sides, is down here, and it goes from the bottom of the circle to the top of the circle. And if we look at x squared plus y squared equals 4, uh, the, the, we want to solve for y, because we want to know how far the circle is from the x-axis. So we minus x squared, we have 4 minus x squared and we square root both sides and that gives us plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. The positive square root gives us the top half of the circle and the negative square root gives us the bottom half of the circle. The distance from the x-axis to the circle anywhere is the square root of 4 minus x squared and the distance going to the bottom like I said is the negative. But if we add these two together, we get zero. So we don't want one of them to be positive and one of them to, one of them to be negative. We're just going to double this distance, because remember, distances should be positive. Now let's go back to the area. We have negative 2 to 2. And the area that we're looking uh, at is side squared, but we want that in x. And the, the area of a square is side times side, which is side squared. And we just determined that one of the sides is 2 times the square root of 4 minus x squared. So now we're going to integrate from negative 2 to 2 of 
2 times the square root of 4 minus x squared squared. This is a representation of the length of the side and we're plugging the side into side squared. Well the square root and the square they undo each other and 2 squared is 4. We can pull the 4 to the outside and now we're integrating from negative 2 to 2 the function 4 minus x squared dx which is 4 times 4x minus 1 third x to the third evaluated from negative 2 to 2. That will equal 4 times we have plug 2 in we get 8 minus 2 to the third is 8 so we have minus 8 thirds and then we're going to minus plugging negative 2 in gives us negative 8 and 2 to the third is negative 8 uh, we have a positive so that's going to be plus 8 thirds and that's equal to 4 times 8 plus 8 is 16 and negative 8 thirds minus 8 thirds is negative 16 thirds which is equal to 4 times let's see we have 3 times 16 is 48 thirds minus 16 thirds is equal to 4 times 48 minus 16 is 32 32 thirds and the final answer is 128 thirds is the volume so units cubed let's look at the same region but for this solid each cross section perpendicular to the x-axis is an equilateral triangle find the volume of this solid let's look at our geometry sketch pad we'll go to equilateral triangles this time let's reset everything so the base is the same circle with a radius of two let's drop the y-axis let's see four equilateral triangles there's just four somewhat random equilateral triangles with the base uh, going from one the, the bottom of the circle to the top of the circle let's sweep the equilateral triangles so this is a representation of an infinite amount of equilateral triangles being swept across the circle and now it's going to go down because the side is getting shorter let's create the solid so we have uh, this corner of the top of the roof and there's only going to be one kind of angle up here one edge so to speak alright and then we, it will sweep again I think let's show the solid let's show it with four of those equilateral triangles in there and what's this slide equilateral triangle inside the solid so there's the solid and there is uh, all of the triangles being swept through and we can rotate this at any time just to kind of get an idea of what this shape would look like let's reset let's drop the y I guess I already have it copied and we're gonna see four equilateral triangles and I've already copied this over now we want to find we want to integrate the cross-sectional area and the cross-sectional area is one-half base times height but we want to get all of this into x so we want dx and again we're integrating from negative 2 to 2 now we have to get what the base is and what the height is well half of the base is once again the square root of x squared minus or uh, 4 minus x squared because we have x squared plus y squared equals 4 y squared equals 4 minus x squared and so y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared but we don't want to add the positive up here to the negative down here representing the other half of the base because then we'll get zero and distance is always reported as uh, a positive value so we want to double this length which is the length from the x-axis to the circle we have the base right here the base now we are integrating from negative 2 to 2 of 1 half times 2 times the square root of 4 minus x squared now we have to get the height well let's look at an equilateral triangle and we want this height right here well if this is a side and this is a side and this is a side then from here to here is one half the side and we're looking for the height height squared 
plus one fourth, I was thinking four, one fourth side squared is equal to side squared. So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Height squared is equal to four fourths minus one fourth is three fourths s squared. And then if we square root both sides, we get the square root of three over two s. Square root of three is square root of three, square root of four is two, and square root of s squared is s. So there's the height, but that's in s. But we've decided that uh, one of the sides right here is square root of three over two uh, times two times the square root of four minus x squared, because that's the length of one of the sides right there. And we have it times square root of three over two. So the height is square root of three over two times two times the square root of four minus x squared. Well, now we're integrating from negative two to two. This simplifies quite a bit. These twos are gonna cancel. These twos are gonna cancel. And when we square these two, the square roots will go away. The only thing that will remain is the square root of three and we'll still have four minus x squared, dx. Now we can pull the square root of three out front and the integral is 4x minus 1 third x to the third and we're evaluating that from negative 2 to 2. We have square root of 3 uh, times 8 minus 8 thirds minus negative 8 and we have plus 8 thirds. Square root of 3 times 8 plus 8 is 16 negative eight-thirds minus eight-thirds is negative sixteen-thirds. We have the square root of three times forty-eight-thirds minus sixteen-thirds and that is square root of three times uh, thirty-two-thirds. In exercise one and two find a formula for the area a of x of the cross sections of the solid that are perpendicular to the x-axis. The solid lies between planes perpendicular to the x-axis at x equals 0 and x equals 4. The cross-sections perpendicular to the x-axis between these planes runs from negative square root of x to square root of x. The cross-sections are circular disks with diameters in the xy plane. So we're finding a formula for the area in x. Well, the area of a circle, because these cross-sections are, are circular, is pi r squared but the radius is running from the x-axis to the curve. So there's that big circle. Uh, here is the middle circle right there. There's the radius. And the smaller one, the radius is right here. So look at these radii are following the curve x squared. Excuse me, not x squared, but they're following the curve squared of x. So the cross-sectional area is pi times the square root of x squared, which is pi x. The cross sections are squares with bases in the xy plane. So we want a of x. The, the cross sections are squares and the side is running from negative square root of x to square root of x. But we don't want to add these two together and say well the side is zero. Uh, we want to report this length as a positive and this length as a positive so the length of one of the sides is 2 square root of x. Well, we're looking at squares, so it's side squared is the area, and a side is 2 square root of x. And if we square that, we get 4x. So the area in terms of x is 4x. The cross sections are squares with diagonals in the xy plane. Oh boy, I'm going to have to draw this. Let's try to duplicate this drawing right here. Here's the parabola. And now the squares have diagonals on the xy plane, which means the square is sitting like that and something like, woo boy, like that. Well, now we have to find the length of the diagonal of a square. All right. Let's see if we can get this done. Well, we want the area to be side squared. 
Now, the length of this diagonal right here, it's now 2 times the square root of x. This is a side, and this is a side. And if you do side squared plus side squared, that's equal to 2 square root of x squared. And we have 2 side squared equals 4x. So side squared is equal to 2x. So a side is equal to the square root of 2x. Well, now the area is a side squared. So we have the square root of 2x squared. So the area is 2x. The cross sections are equilateral triangles with bases in the xy plane. So let's do a little drawing here. There's the parabola. And we have equilateral triangles with the base on the xy plane here. So there's the equilateral triangle. The base, well, the area is 1 half base times height. And so the area is equal to 1 half. The base is 2 square root of x. And we need to get the height. So let's get the height of this equilateral triangle. If this is side and that's a side, then this is 1 half times a side, and we need the height. So height squared plus 1 fourth side squared is equal to side squared. So height squared is equal to 4 fourths minus 1 fourth is 3 fourths side squared. So height now is equal to the square root of 3 over 2 times a side. So the height is uh, square root of 3 over 2 times a side, but that is square root of 3 over 2 times. The side is 2 times the square root of x. 2 times square root of x. So that's 1 half the base times the height is square root of 3 over 2 times 2 square root of x. And again, a lot of things cancel. Those cancel, those cancel, and even the square roots cancel. So we end up with the square root of 3 times x for the cross-sectional area.